Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan back for some more thrilling chemistry. This video, we are gonna explain how atoms form covalent bonds and construct electron dot formulas to illustrate covalent bonds. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna define what the heck a covalent bond is. Two, we are then going to explain how covalent bonds form covalent compounds. And then finally, numero three, we are going to discuss the characteristics of covalent bonding. What is a covalent bond? How does it happen? And then what are some characteristics of covalent bonding? Exciting. Okay, as you take a look at your screen, here's a thrilling animation to get you pumped about covalent bonding. Essentially, this entire video can be summed up in one thrilling animation. Boom, covalent bond. Now, not in your notes, but a quick refresher. Remember that chemical bonds are just mutual electrical attractions between positive charges in the nucleus and the negative charges in the valence level of different atoms that bind those atoms together. Keep in mind that bonds tend to form so that each atom by gaining, losing, or sharing electrons has an octet of electrons in its valence level. Ocho, eight. The resulting arrangement of electrons reduces the overall potential energy of the system. Again, think about Coulomb's law, sort of an underlying principle to everything that we do in chemistry. You've got attractions, you've got repulsions, positive charges, negative charges. But again, a huge thing to think about here is how can forming a bond reduce our overall potential energy? Now, we've talked about ionic bonding, we've talked about metallic bonding, covalent bonding occurs between two non-metal atoms. Here, electrons are shared to complete the valence level of the atoms. Hola mi gente, soy Señor Boylan. Hoy vamos a aprender de química. ¿Cómo se dice? To share. En español, se dice compartir. Anyway, what I mean by that is a great way to remember that covalent bonds means the sharing of electrons is to remember your español. The verb to share in español es compartir. And if you don't know Spanish, that's probably not going to help you at all. Learn another language. It'll do you and this world some good. So as you take a look at your screen, here's an animation of what's going on in a covalent bond. We've got two atoms of hydrogen that are coming together to share their electrons to complete their valence level. Some important characteristics as to why covalent bonding is gonna have atoms share their electrons instead of ripping them away, is that recognize that two nonmetals are gonna have large effective nuclear charges and small radii. So they can attract and hold each other's electrons to make shared pairs of electrons. Think about your CVR model of the periodic table. Check out those nonmetals, really high effective core charges, plus fours, fives, sixes, and sevens. I'm leaving out the noble gases because they don't really form bonds. There are some exceptions and we'll talk about that in AP chemistry. Basically, core charge hugely attracted to the valence electrons of a neighboring atom but that attraction is very much reciprocated. Boom, really attractive cores on either side. Now, atoms can make what we call single, double, or triple bonds, depending on how many electrons they share. Take a look at your screen. We've got an example of a single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond. Notice in a single bond, a single shared pair of electrons. In a double bond, two shared pairs, and in a triple bond, three shared pairs. No quadruple bonding. Also important notice at the bottom, we see the individual electrons represented by dots, but many times to illustrate that the electrons are shared between the atoms, you're gonna see little dash marks. So those dash marks represent two electrons or a pair of electrons. Here's another thrilling image to illustrate what's going on with covalent bonding using those Lewis valence electron dot symbols. I encourage you to pause the video here, take a time out, check out this image. Now with covalent compounds, the smallest group of elements that are held together by covalent bonds we call a molecule. So covalent compounds are also referred to as molecular compounds. Those are synonymous. Molecular compound, covalent compound, they mean the same thing. We're talking about two nonmetals sharing their electrons. Compartiendo los electrones. So here's a great image of an atom of chlorine sharing one of its valence electrons 
with a neighboring atom of chlorine that's also sharing one of its valence electrons. Notice that in so doing, they complete one another's valence level, forming an octet of electrons. As we distinguish between molecules for covalent compounds and formula units for ionic compounds, again recognize that there are discrete individual molecules with covalent compounds, whereas in the ionic compounds, there is no discrete unit. The bonding is occurring in all directions, which is why we simply look for the ratio of ions to give us overall neutral charge in those ionic compounds. Basically, we don't see the bonding occur in between molecules in covalent compounds, but in ionic compounds, we see that bonding occur in all directions. All right, so let's talk about some quick properties of covalent compounds. They have generally, generally they have relatively low melting points. And again, as you think about the process of melting where a solid becomes a liquid, for your Covalent compounds, because there aren't any bonds between your molecules, it takes relatively little energy to overcome the forces of attraction between molecules and go from the solid to the liquid phase. Whereas an ionic compound, those bonds are holding each of the ions together very tightly. Covalent compounds typically do not conduct electrical current when dissolved in aqueous solutions. Again, we aren't ripping electrons away like we are in ionic compounds, so there aren't any charged particles to come apart and conduct electrical currents. Couple of last important characteristics of covalent compounds is first bond length, which is just the distance between two covalently bottom bonded atoms at their minimum potential energy. And generally speaking, your triple bonds are shorter than your double bonds and your double bonds are shorter than your single bonds. Here's a terrible image, but shows you essentially the distance in angstroms between two carbon atoms that are single, double, and triple bonded respectively. Notice that in the single bond, the distance or bond length is 1.54 angstroms, in a double bond, 1.34, and the shortest, 1.20 angstroms in your triple bonded carbon atoms. Okay, and the final property to think about is bond energy. And you can really think about bond energy of two ways but typically it's represented in kilojoules per mole. Now, you can think about that bond energy as either the energy absorbed when a bond breaks or the energy released when a bond forms. And again, you're thinking about your two separate atoms coming together to form your bonded atoms. It's gonna take less energy to break a single bond than it would a double bond, and less energy to break a double bond than a triple. Again, here's that thrilling image. Now let's focus on the bond energies. Notice that single has the lowest bond energy, triple has the largest. Many times, as you take a look at this data table of bond lengths and bond energies, by convention, we describe bond energies using positive values or the energy that goes into breaking those bonds. Whew, and that is it for covalent bonding. Be sure to compartir this video with your friends.